Welcome everyone once again as we return to the Land of Giants. This time we have Reaper Bones, Golan the Hill Giant. And said it before, I'm going to say it again, Bones material, despite all its uh, issues and difficulties painting and cleaning seam lines, you can't beat the price. This guy is available in metal for $50 or in Reaper Bones for nine dollars can't beat that price so let's begin starting off with my traditional black primer undercoat and over that i have already applied a layer of vallejo model color burnt cadmium maroon and as always i always like to uh, start off with a undercoat that's closer to what i plan on uh, achieving with that area so um instead of working off the black primer. So that cadmium room is just to get me that nice fleshy tone, uh, visually something I could work off of. And over that, we're putting the real first layer of paint, which is burnt cadmium maroon with some Vallejo model color orange brown added in addition to some Vallejo model color leather brown. And we're doing a very heavy dry brush just to cover the whole model. Uh, once we move on to the other steps, the following steps, uh, we'll do some nice cleaner layering. The next layer consists of the exact same mix as the previous layer. However, now I've added more Vallejo model color orange brown to it as we start working up through those shade layers and eventually getting to the base coat. Next, I mixed in some Vallejo Panzer Aces Yellowish Rust to the previous mix. So now we have a four color mix going on. And this is, I think, where it first occurred to me I was having a problem. Um, the colors I started out with were a bit too dark for what, uh, in my mind, I wanted to achieve. So I had to keep uh, extending this color further into the recesses uh, this is thin, so basically I was trying to glaze the recesses and bring up the shadows uh, to a slightly lighter color. And uh, this is kind of where all the tweaking began with this project. You can keep adding more and more different paints to your mix until it becomes a horrific mess. Eventually you have to start fresh again, and that's what I did here. So working closer to what I wanted the base main color of the flesh to be, and this is simply Vallejo Panzer Aces Yellowish Rust mixed with Vallejo Model Color Orange Brown. And still had a bit of the issue about of the, uh, the skin being too dark. So this color, once again, uh, glazed on in several layers and also reaching further into the shade areas than I normally would because I still needed to bring that color uh, up a little bit in tone. So this layer was applied many, many times and very thinly until I started bringing up that darker colors left by that initial coat of the um, cadmium maroon, orange brown, and leather brown. After all that tweaking, I finally managed to get to uh, a color that was more hoping for. And on top of that color, I'm now using straight Panzer Aces Yellowish Rust and starting work, work towards those higher highlights. Moving on to the next highlight, and it's time to add another color to the mix. And that color is Vallejo Game Color Filthy Brown. Uh, that's mixed in roughly equal portions to the yellowish rust and continuing our goal to the tippy tops of all the little muscles. Getting close to the end and once again it's time to add yet another color. And this time it is Vallejo model color Sunny Skin Tone. Uh, kind of interesting you can do with skin tones is you can make all funky different colors like I'm using here, like rust colors and uh, orange brown for skin tones. And uh, it helps to make them a little bit more real if you add a more 
uh, traditional flush color to it at some point. So even those guys kind of a dark orangey yellowish hue to his skin by adding the sunny skin tone, it's adding something a bit more you know, humanly recognizable to him. And finally, we get to the final highlight, which is straight sunny skin tone, uh, applied very sparingly, as you can see, in comparison with all those other layers that we've gone through. Uh, a lot, a lot of paint on this guy, just trying to achieve the color of skin that I wanted, and uh, yet it still wasn't quite there. After all those layers and trying to fix the initial two dark shade layers, still felt things were a, a little off, so I decided to fix things with a fairly heavy glaze of uh, Game Color Sepia ink mixed with a little bit of yellow ink. And this would help to tie all the colors together because it's going to give everything the same hue as the sepia and yellow that we're using over it. So it's going to it's going to bring up the two dark shade colors and tone down the highlights, which uh, were not too high, but uh, it's going to tie everything together. Since the hue of the skin changed throughout the paint job, I think I had to go back and fix it. Adjust it a little bit because that initial red, again, uh, too red for what I ended up with. So I wanted to go back and reinforce some of the shade colors by going over it with a thick, uh, precisely placed sepia ink. And then finally, to put a little bit of warmth back in those shade areas, the deep recesses, going in with some very, very thin Vallejo Game Color hexed lichen and carefully, very precisely painting in uh, just a little bit of color into those deep recesses. After all that work, you would think that we might be done with the flesh, but nope, no we're not. Still have to go back and paint all his little pimples or warts or whatever they are. And for that, I went back to my original uh, Burnt Cadmium Maroon, uh, did a light coat of that, and then just hit them, hit them with a little spot of Vallejo Game Color Elf Flesh, and then uh, did a very light wash of the Vallejo Game Color Hexed Lichen. So using the same colors that we used on the flesh, however, Know, make them a little bit lighter, adding the elf flesh to make them pop a bit more. It's not the right word used for pimples. Next comes the hair on his arms and legs, and this poses a bit of a, a painting challenge because unlike fur or the hair on your head, uh, this hair is much, uh, it's much thinner and you don't want to paint it like the other two uh, because it's not a solid mass. You want to see some of the skin underneath. And so it started off with a base of uh, Vallejo model color German gray mixed with a little bit of Vallejo game color cold gray. Uh, and to that now I've now using straight German gray and started adding some uh, shade color in the recesses. And as you can see, I'm not applying it with uh, thick broad strokes like I normally would. I'm trying to do more like hash marks, um, just quick attacks with the paint. Uh, I've also thinned the paint with some glaze medium uh, rather than water because I want the paint to be controllable but still somewhat translucent so I don't lose that skin color underneath. Next, going in with some straight Vallejo Game Color Cold Gray, and hopefully with the lighter color you can now easier see uh, the texture I'm trying to add to the hair there. It's uh, just very short, straight lines with, um, again, thicker paint than I normally use, but it's thin slightly uh, with the glaze medium. And then finally, a little bit of Vallejo Model Color Light Gray added to the Cold Gray and applying just a few stray uh, lighter gray colors here and there, uh, mostly towards the, the end of where the hair ends. Mm -hmm. 
normally after finishing all the main stuff on the figure, I do all the small stuff off camera. However, I wanted to show you one more part here. Uh, I recently picked up a bottle of the new Vallejo Metal Color line and just want to share with you, this stuff is awesome. Um, it's formulated slightly different than my favorite uh, Vallejo Model Air. Uh, the colors blend together seamlessly, which was always an issue uh, with the previous paints. Um, these are so good. I actually bought a bottle, went home, tried it, immediately drove back to the store, Twain Men's, and bought several different colors. So let's just play around with it right now. Uh, started off with a base coat of steel, which by the way is a very dark steel color. And to that I have blended in some of the silver color and just haphazardly stippling it on as a highlight. So uh, it's not smooth, it's a little bit more broken up. More silver added at this point, concentrating more on the edges of the armor plate. And again, still using a stippling motion uh, to get a bit uh, more of a modeled, uh, pitted appearance to the metal. And then finally, pure silver added just to the edges of the armor. For some shade and a little bit of dirt, using a mix of Leho Game Color black and brown inks, uh, fairly thick. Uh, once again, applied in a modeled, uh, stippled pattern, and just kind of using my finger to clean up, clean up if I put too much on. So just, just a little in the recesses, stab it here or there, uh, get a nice uh, uneven pattern to it. And then finally finishing up with a little bit of Alejo Game Color Skin Ink and just applying it here and there for a little bit of rust, not too much. And then finally, here we have it, the finished Golan the Hill Giant. And Man, this was quite a road. Uh, this wasn't so much a guide that I know people can follow. It's more of a diary of all the mistakes I made and me trying to fix them. Um, despite what people think, uh, a lot of times, you know, I'm trying things new myself and they don't always come out the way I expected. Um, the flesh, the first case in point, uh, I wanted something a bit more in the orange range and start off with too dark of a tone and it was too red and it took a lot of work to fix and it's not something if you try getting the same paint color uh, flesh color uh, by following my guide you're probably not going to get it because there's a lot of tweaking done here off camera and it took a long time to get to this stage uh, the end result though i think i fixed it uh, definitely came out more yellow than what i wanted but i do like the look uh, second case in point is the hair on the arms and legs. Uh, again, first time I've tried doing it and uh, it came out okay, but I think it needs to be a bit more translucent. Uh, trying to do it on a textured surface does uh, prove to be a problem. Also, uh, let you in on a little secret that I didn't even know at the time. Uh, the German gray I used on the arms, I did not realize that uh, there was an issue with the paint and it wasn't adhering to the model correctly. And after I did the hair, I tried to blend them in to the skin by applying the same wash, the same glaze wash I used on the flesh, which was the sepia and yellow ink. And it just peeled the German gray right off. So uh, not everything I do, I uh, get right. But uh, hopefully you picked up a little bit from this video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.